I would think that an official word on Chuck or if there's a change in GM or whatever, I don't think it's going to happen until probably 4 or 5 o'clock this afternoon. Yeah. Are you getting a feel for anything out there yet? Uh, not necessarily from a timing standpoint. We know it will. I, I would agree with you that it will happen uh, in that ballpark. So uh, things will move very quickly at that particular time. I don't know about a GM deci decision uh, just yet. That yeah. may take a little bit more time, but at least with Pagano, that should come down within the next four hours or so. And here's the thing, man. I mean, you look around the league, uh, there are already coordinators out interviewing for Vega head coaches. Yeah. I mean, the, the Dolphins uh, promoted their GM. Today things are already happening. It's, it's black. It's, it's Black Monday. And yeah, if you're gonna being fired. Exactly. If you're gonna act, Michael, you gotta act now, right? That's right. That's right. You can look at that a couple of different ways. If there's a candidate, let's say, who's still coaching right now yes. in the postseason, uh, in a coordinator or something like that, then you may have a little bit more time. Um, but yeah, there are reports that Chip Kelly's already reaching out to the 49ers. The 49ers interested in Sean Payton. If you want to make yourself available, you need yeah. to do so immediately to show that you are in the arms race. And so, yeah, that's one of the reasons why, you know, teams are doing this as quick as possible. Yeah. Adam Gase, the Bears offensive coordinator, who I think is going to be a hot name uh, this offseason, at least the next couple of weeks or so. He's well, already interviewing with the Browns and the Eagles. Exactly. And I think another name is Josh McDaniels for, for yeah. New England. I think he's somebody that's going to get a couple of interviews. Yep. And he's one of the teams I'm obviously still playing. So uh, teams that will want to interview him will have to wait, obviously. All right, stand by, Michael. We'll let you go because the players are talking right now. Thanks a lot. We'll see you out there later this afternoon and uh, certainly beginning you, uh, for the now Indy at 4 o'clock. Uh, what do you think is going to happen? I think that I, I think Chuck will not be renewed. And by the way, he won't be fired because he doesn't have a contract. Exactly. <laughs> you can't fire the guy point. without a contract. You can't fire him. So I don't think he'll be renewed. I like Chuck a lot. I think he's done a lot of great things. Uh, there are some things that uh, didn't happen this season, in the last couple of seasons, uh, that I think has led to something like this. But what I think Jimmy, and I say Jimmy, Jim Mercer wants to do, I think he took, it was a real stretch for Jim to hire a GM and a head coach who had, ex no, no had experience, experience at all. Exactly. So I was surprised by that move. So it was relatively like rookies coming in, rookie head coach, rookie GM, and did rather well the first year. And for year. a five-star franchise to do that, yeah. I was a little surprised by. So you think he's going to kind of redo his steps and kind of go veteran? I think he's going to go veteran. Well, there's two things I think. The, the, you know, Chuck not taking the extension that was offered to him last offseason mm -hmm. um, is kind of like, I'm going to show you my worth you know mm -hmm. kind of like the Joe Flacco thing he didn't take that extension he goes on to win the Super Bowl he breaks the bank right. you know what I mean I don't think we had to win the Super Bowl in order for coach Pagano to stay and get a, mm -hmm. what he thought he deserved money wise um, but but there are many that think he sh that the only way he was going to get an extension is if the steam won the Super and Bowl. that's possible too after not taking one right. but um, I don't think we weren't world beaters we didn't make the playoffs, we didn't get to the Super Bowl, so that's obviously against him. The reasons we didn't are, I think, for him. Mm -hmm. um, the injuries, the shredding of this team. I mean, mm -hmm. you lose your starting quarterback for nine games. Mm -hmm. um, we lost our starting quarterback for 16 games in 2011. We go 2-14. and 14. You know, this year we go 8-8. Eight and eight. So mm -hmm. you salvage some kind of a season. I think the fact that there were such lofty goals of, of Super Bowl and then not even making the playoffs and winning your division, I think kind of hurts a little bit. But again, all the talent on this team, you lose your starting quarterback. Maybe we have enough to still make the playoffs. But I do oh, think I, it's I think this team is, is two healthy players away yeah, from winning the division. I agree. I agree. Well, at least winning, yeah, winning a couple more games throughout the, the hey, stretch. That's run. the thing. You win two more games and you win the division. You're good, so. you're good to go. Right. But I do think there's a little bit of a less miles thing going on right here. Okay? I think the rallying of the fans around Coach Pagano the mm -hmm. last couple weeks mm -hmm could sway the decision in his favor. Do you think so? Uh, you know, you look at Les Miles. He was getting let go until that last game of the season right. where his players rallied around him, the fans rallied around him, and then, hey, we're bringing him back. I think the players, obviously, if you looked at, watch that post-game locker room, obviously they love this man, obviously respect him, um, want him as their coach. The fans, you hear them talking about, you know, Chuck Stay, Chuck Strong, right. all this stuff. I lo love to have coached. Pagano back. So I do think there's a little bit of a less miles thing going on here where I don't know if the decision would, was already made, but it could sway him in uh, Mr. Ursay into keeping Coach Pagano for, I, I for those you, reasons. I'll, uh, I'll give you this. Jim Ursay is. Uh, because there was some genius coaching that went on yesterday in that game. 
I would completely agree. And with that, take a look at the final score. Uh, we're burying the lead, <laughs> literally. Uh, the Colts got it done 30 to 24 as uh, they improved, finished the season at eight and eight. Uh, some impressive numbers there, uh, I thought. The quarterback situation, I think that's probably what you're going to talk about. Yeah. And there was a segue into this, this coaching they did. But to divide up the two minute drill quarterback and then Josh Freeman, uh, dare I say, brilliant. You know? Brilliant. It, it's brilliant. And yeah. Coach Pagano, the offensive coaching staff, and really the defensive coaching staff, the kind of job they had. Because one of my keys to the game yesterday was I don't know how, if the defense is going to have to play 50 minutes or if they're actually going to play 30 minutes. However long the defense had to play, they had to play lights out. They had to right. get sacks. They had to get turnovers. And they did that. They scored points. They got sacks. They did a really good job. I, I thought we relaxed after we got a lead in the second half, kind of like we've done all year, right. and we let them back into right. the game. But that job at, at, to coach those quarterbacks in less than a week, five, six days, and it, it's kind of a simple philosophy. Let's give one quarterback the job of running the offense in a normal situational game, mm -hmm. and we'll give the other quarterback the two-minute drill and maybe, maybe at another situation that he was focusing on because – it, it took so much of a load off each each quarterback, yeah, yeah. and and they can literally, you can learn the two minute drill in a week. You mm -hmm. can learn the signals and the calls and, and the uh, code words and things like that. And it showed when Lindley got in there and did the two minute drill that he was on it. Yeah. And and Josh Freeman, you can learn situational offense in a week. Um, and it showed. I it, it was brilliant. The plays we were running weren't. Um, all too innovative. I, lo I loved some of the Wildcat. That mm -hmm. was new. Mm -hmm. um, it was plays we would run with the quarterback handing off to the back. We just did it without a quarterback mm -hmm. under there. And then the touchdown to Kobe Flinder was a play every team runs. It's a sluggo. It's a slant go. But we run it with a seam and a hitch on the back side. We just run it out of three tight ends. And it gives them a completely different look. Mm -hmm. And you get a huge a play a out ball, of it. By the way. And a the great ball group. and yeah. great protection. I thought the offensive line did a really good job early in that game. I mm -hmm. thought they, like, relaxed a little bit toward the end of that game as well but all in all just just a brilliant job of coaching and getting a win under those circumstances